Hey guys, Will here. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at pineapple grips, which offer a nifty solution for either refreshing a tired old Fnatic wheel or just customizing to making it look a little bit more personal and a little bit more interesting. So as a lot of you would know, particularly our Kantara material does tend to wear over time, does tend to look a little bit tired. And uh, unfortunately, if you are outside the warranty period, Fnatic don't actually offer a service where you can just purchase replacement grips directly from them. But thankfully we do have a solution in pineapple grips. And today we're gonna to be checking it out. Now, there are a couple of different options available from their website. We're gonna be taking a look through a couple of color swatches today. There are a few other color options available on their website too. But just to give you an idea of the services that they provide, today we are gonna be having a look at their replacement 3D printed grips, which is what we have installed on this wheel. We're taking you through the installation process, of course, as well. The installation is a little bit more complex than you might think. So I would definitely recommend watching the video, making sure that this is a process that you're gonna be happy with before you jump in and uh, buy these grips for yourself. It's not difficult, but it does take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, but we'll run you through it all today. They do also offer the option to mail in your existing grips, have them refreshed with whatever material you like and have those shipped back to you as well. But if you wanna have minimal downtime, then replacement grips is the way to go. So just to quickly run you through their website here, and we'll put a link down in the description below for you guys as well. The new 3D printed grips are 45 pounds for the faux leather, which is what we have here, or 50 pounds if you want the Alcantara material. And then if you wanna send in your existing grips and have them mailed back to you, the price is 40 pounds for the faux leather or 45 pounds for the uh, Alcantara version. Now we do also have the option to customize here as well with a little bit of 3D printed plastic, which has uh, customizable with a bit of text. So maybe your name, maybe your racing number and your surname, something like that. That is an extra five pounds on top of the price if you wish to go with that option. But we're gonna check it all out in detail for you guys today. We're gonna have a look at the build quality first of all, take you through some of the color options, take you through the entire installation process in detail. And by the end of the video, you should have a good idea of whether this is the product for you. So let's get going. So let's start off by having a look at what we receive if we order a set of pineapple grips. So plastic bag, we've got a A4 sheet of paper here with a few safety notices, uh, some information around installation. We'll obviously take you through the installation process in just a moment. Some instructions for caring for the grips and so forth. So pretty straightforward stuff, but it's good to see that they're including all that information there. Obviously jump on the website for complete installation instructions too. And we will of course take you through everything here too. So then we have the grips themselves as well as I ordered a little sample pack here too of the various different material options so we can take a look at those too. So we'll look at that in just a moment, we'll set that aside for now. Set the plastic bag aside too, we can see there's another warning sticker on the back here specific to Australia I believe uh, because we have to have all these additional warnings around plastic bags and danger for kids and stuff like that. So good to see that they are, you know, paying attention to those kinds of things. It just, you know, little details like that let you know that they are a business that takes what they're doing very seriously, which is great. And then we've got our cardboard sheet here with the grips attached to it. And yeah, it's as simple as that. There's some tools and mounting hardware behind this grip as well, according to the card. And again, very well presented, very well printed. Basic, but you know, it gets the job done. So if we flip it around, we can see they've got these little plastic tabs which are holding everything in place. So we'll get these removed now. One of the things that I noticed on that sheet of paper is it did say, try to twist as well as pulling, but these seem to be coming out pretty easily. So I don't think we need to worry about that too much. They just pop out from the back, very straightforward. Move that out of the way too, and we can see there, there's some mounting hardware included. So, I mean, straight away, you can see these are very, very well put together. Little branding sticker in there. We've got little metal threaded inserts inside the PLA 3D printed plastic as well. So that's gonna stop us, or at least reduce greatly the risk of cross threading or stripping threads or anything like that when we're installing too. So these are, you know, the little details that I was hoping to see on a product like this just goes beyond, you know, just a standard sort of home job 3D printed kind of thing that you might chuck together yourself at home. So. I've definitely gone a step beyond and the faux leather is quite a nice material as well. It seems to, yeah, seems to feel quite nice just at a glance, but let's pull the rest of it apart now. Pop the other two off. They come off really easily. I mean, they've really have gone above and beyond with the instructions kind of, you know, even telling you how to remove the card on the back, but yeah, these, these pull out very easily. No problems at all. So inside the little bag of hardware, we've got an Allen key, six Allen key bolts, and four little metal pins, which we'll insert into the grips to help us align everything. But we'll set that aside for now. We'll talk about installation in just a moment. What I wanted to do now is just sort of focus in a little bit more on first impressions of this. So comparing it to the leather grips that we have on our F1 2020 limited edition wheel here, 
actually quite similar. Now these are faux leather. I did see on their website that apparently genuine leather is coming soon as well as an option. I don't know what that's gonna cost, but uh, yeah, that is something that they're saying is coming soon. You can see quite similar between the two. The pineapple grip has got kind of more of a texturized kind of finish to it, a bit of a crinkle going on, uh, different spacing between the perforations too. But really, you know, feels very similar. And in terms of squish and everything, both, both of these grips are quite hard. There's not a whole lot of squish in either of them, but they actually feel pretty much identical to each other. So I'd say that this is an OEM-like finish. Obviously, you can tell that it's 3D printed. You can see the slight texture there. It's a very high quality 3D print. Definitely better than what I could do at home with my End of Five 3D printer, but you know, you can tell that it is 3D printed. Now, one thing that I will mention as well, obviously we talked before about the fact that you can send in your original grips to be reupholstered by pineapple grips as well. Now, one thing that I have noticed on Fanatec wheels is this plastic, it does kind of have a rubberized finish to it. So that can wear off over time. And uh, yeah, you can end up with a bit of a shiny plastic kind of thing. I don't have a wheel here at the moment that is worn out, so I can't show you, but around the sides here, just depending on how you hold the wheel, can start to wear out over time and go shiny. So if you are sending your original grips back in to be reupholstered, I assume they're not gonna be addressing that. It's just gonna be the material itself that gets replaced. But yeah, look, I mean, in terms of the quality of the 3D printed pineapple grips versus the originals, as I said before, you can tell that it's 3D printed, but you know, very, very close in terms of the design. And yeah, they actually look really good. You can see as well, We've got my name written on the side there. You can customize that obviously to be whatever you want. Some people just put their first name or last name and their racing number or something like that. And that is just a raised bit of 3D printed plastic there. And then it looks like a coat of white paint has been applied by hand afterwards. So, you know, very kind of personal touch to all of this. It's got kind of got that artisan kind of feel to it, which uh, some people are gonna like it. Some people are gonna prefer a more robotic finish. And in terms of the way the faux leather is finished around the outsides as well, very clean. And just having a look at the way this has all been done internally as well, you can see the way it's all been cut out and glued down. Obviously, somebody with a lot of experience in upholstery is doing this. This isn't something that's just been thrown together by somebody with a 3D printer at home that thought that they could make a new product. This is obviously something that's been done by a professional. So a lot of the 3D printed things that I've seen in the past just don't have anywhere near this quality. Now, one thing that you might have noticed looking at these grips is they do extend up a little bit further along the plastic than the factory Fnatic ones do. Now there's two different versions of the pineapple grips available, the original version and then the plus version, which is what these are. These are both the same price as each other. So it's basically just down to whether you prefer one style over the other. So you can see on this one, the leather cuts away just below this area here, whereas on this one, it extends up. Now, apparently that was a feature request from a lot of customers because the 3D printing has a slightly sharper edge on it than a injection molded plastic like what we have here. You can imagine when you're holding the wheel and you're trying to use this button here in particular, these two buttons, your thumb does actually rub up against that little area there. So I can imagine not quite having that smooth plastic there like you do with the injection molded design uh, may be a little bit of a discomfort for some people not using gloves. I can't imagine it being a problem with gloves on, but yeah, that is definitely uh, done away with with this design. Now we don't have the original design pineapple style grips here to compare for you guys, but to me it does seem like a pretty sensible idea to go with the plus version. So just wanted to highlight that for you guys. Now we'll set the wheel aside. The other thing I wanted to show you as well is this little sample pack that you can order. Now, if you're wanting to get an idea for the different colors, there are a whole bunch of different colors listed on their website, more than actually come in the sample kit. These are the standard colors which are available at the standard price. So if you do want to explore other color options, have a look on the website, get in touch with Peter and he'll give you pricing for any other color. But the way this works is you can order a little sample pack for 10 pounds. If you do end up placing an order with Pineapple Grips, they'll give you a discount code for five pounds. So effectively you get half of the cost of this back. And this gives you a nice little way to be able to actually get your hands on the colors and see them in person before you place an order. Because it is difficult, I think with uh, with the pandemic situation, people are getting better at uh, you know looking at things online and then making a decision without actually having hands on. But it is good to have the option of hands on if we want it as well. So let's just move these up a little bit and have a look at the different options that we have here. Now I'm colorblind, so I'm not even gonna to attempt to uh, explain all the different colors to you. You guys can see that for yourself. But what I'll do is just lay them all out here and we can have a look through. So there we go, an assortment of eight different colors in the Alcantara material and then five different colors in our faux leather. And the two different black options there are quite nice as well. You can see this style has got the deeper and closer together perforations or indentations, I should say, because they're not really perforations. They don't go all the way through. And that is actually more closely matched to what we have on the factory leather wheel from Fnatic. And then obviously this other option with a slight sort of crinkle texture 
is the same as what we actually have on our grips. And yeah, it all looks pretty nice. So decent range of options available there, regardless of whether you're just tidying up and freshening up an older worn out wheel, or just wanting to customize your wheel to make it look a little bit more personal. So let's get these grips installed. I'm gonna put them on my Formula V 2.5, replacing the Alcantara grips that are on here currently. Really, really like the feeling of the leather on the F1 2020 limited edition wheel. And yeah, we're not putting a whole lot of use into the Formula Carbon anymore. So let's get them installed on this guy. Now, depending on what wheel you have, there are two different sets of instructions available on their website. And they do take you through with pictures in step-by-step -step form. So definitely follow along and go through. It's not a difficult installation, but there are quite a number of steps involved in doing this. So just follow through on the website, take things slowly, take things one step at a time, and you shouldn't have any problems. So instruction set number one is for the Formula Black, the Formula Carbon, and the Formula Esports, and everything else is instruction set number two. So that's what we're gonna click on. And uh, that's actually one thing that I should mention here. You'll notice the difference between the open and closed bottoms between these two wheels. Now these pineapple grips are compatible with both. If you have a look at the bottom of the limited edition wheels, you can actually see there is an opening there where the closed portion of the carbon fiber composite would normally pass through. So there's just a little opening there. So that is exactly the same on these pineapple grips as well. You can see there's that little opening there. So you don't need to worry about compatibility. We'll work with either the open or closed bottom style. So I'm gonna set these two wheels aside now out of the way, give ourselves a bit more space and let's get started. So let's start off by talking about the tools that you're gonna need. So you're gonna need a two millimeter hex key, a 2.5 millimeter hex key, a four millimeter hex key as well. This one actually came with the Formula V 2.5 wheel. So if you have one of these, you should already have the Allen key. You're gonna need a little jeweler's screwdriver set as well, a Phillips head out of that. And then also a plastic pry tool is recommended too. Now that is one thing that I would have liked to have seen them include in the package. These are super, super cheap, but not always the easiest thing to come by and not something that a lot of people just have laying around the house. So yeah, definitely would like to see them include something like that in the future, potentially. So let's get started with step one now, which is removing our paddles. Now one handy little tip, if you do happen to have the original box, you can actually use these little bits of packaging to protect the wheel while you're working on a couple of steps. It's not gonna be useful throughout the entire process, but for a couple of steps, it will come in handy. So what we're gonna do now, having removed those two little bolts, or those two little screws, I should say, they're hex head screws actually, they're self tappers that go into the plastic, is remove this little back shell here. And that has revealed our connectors for the shifter. Now you can see in there, five connectors, that little one there is not gonna be in use. If you have an advanced paddle module or a magnetic paddle module, you're gonna be using the outer two connections. If you're using the standard uh, micro switch style, they'll be plugged into these guys here. But what we're gonna do is just simply unplug those, very, very carefully tug on the connector itself. So try not to pull on the cable, wiggle it out like so. It comes off pretty easily, but you just wanna make sure you're not tearing on the wires themselves. There we go. So. Pop that guy out. All right, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that neither of those wires are snagged on anything. They might be wrapped around a couple of the other screws that are in there as well. So just wanna make sure that they're not snagged. Now the next step is gonna to be to remove the two four millimeter hex bolts from either side, and that is gonna free up our paddles. These cables will then pass through the channels and that will be our shifters removed. So we're gonna grab the four millimeter Allen key. We're just gonna pass the cable through very carefully. We have to wiggle it around just a little bit to get it to come through the hole. There we go. And now exactly the same process on the other side. So we're gonna flip the wheel back up on its back again now. Take these guys back off. Now we're gonna remove the remaining six screws. So one, two, three, four, five, Six. Now again, we wanna make sure that we use exactly the right size Allen key for these. If you do happen to use one that's a little bit too small, you can end up rounding these or just scratching them up a little bit. And obviously these are screws that you're gonna be looking at all the time. So you wanna make sure that they're absolutely damage free. So the top two are two millimeter and then the middle and bottom are 2.5 millimeters. So we're just gonna be very careful as we crack them. Originally they do have, uh, at least some of them may have thread locker on them. So I'm just gonna be very careful there. That one's undoing pretty easily. And just take note of what you're taking out from where as well, because it is easy to lose track of everything. So you've got four identical screws, one, two, three, four, and then I'm assuming these four will probably be exactly the same as each other as well, but we'll have a look at that in just a moment. So yeah, not actually seeing any thread locker on that at all. I thought there might be, but no. There you go, okay. 
Now these ones are actually different from the ones in the middle, so we are gonna to wanna to take note of that. I'll just pull one of these out and show you quickly. So if you have a look, you can see the ones that are in the middle have a thicker cap on them with the taper below it. So we're just gonna to wanna to make sure we take note of that. Thicker ones go in the middle, thinner ones go at the bottom. So we're gonna pop our protector covers back on again. And this time we're wanting to undo the two screws on the top here. So you just need to angle these away a little bit. And again, we'll take our two millimeter. And these ones are a little bit tighter. We have to use a little bit more leverage. Again, just be super careful here. You don't accidentally slip and scratch your rubberized plastic because it will scratch very easily. And those ones again are the same as the ones that we had in the front. So we can just group all of those together. And then while we're on the back here, you can see two more little screws. These will also need to be removed. So we're gonna use a little Phillips head jeweler screwdriver. And now this is the part where we're probably gonna to wanna to lay this on a cloth because we need to get to the screws which are actually sitting underneath these parts. So I'll grab this guy quickly. Now when you pick it up, you're gonna to wanna to pick it up from the front as well. If you pick it up from the back, this whole assembly is gonna come loose at this point. So we're gonna pop it down like so. There we go. And now we wanna undo one, two, three screws on either side. So then we can flip the wheel back onto its back again. Remembering again, this back part, as you can see, is loose. So we're gonna to wanna to be really careful here. We don't wanna tear any cables. Remembering that, of course, the quick release connection in here is still connected via a ribbon cable inside. So we're gonna to wanna to kinda of grab it like this making sure we're holding all the pieces together and flip it over onto its back. I might just remove that cloth again as well since we don't need that. All right, and now we should be able to remove the front half of each grip. There we go. So just wiggle it loose. There we are, and that reveals our little vibration motors that are sitting inside as well. So we'll just set those aside for now. Now we wanna get our cloth back again and then again remembering we want to make sure we're holding onto everything flip it back over onto its face again like so we're going to lift off this back cover again being very careful of the ribbon cable inside like so now if we have a quick look inside here you can see we could remove our quick release adapter but there's this black goop which is protecting or sealing the ribbon connection from coming loose. So we don't really wanna you know, undo that unnecessarily. We can just sort of sit it out of here out of the way. Again, just making sure that we're not scratching any of our plastics, but just sitting it like that seems to work fine. There's enough length there on the cable that that's nice and comfortable. So now we're going to flip the wheel back around again, making sure we're very careful not to scratch anything against anything. So we're just gonna sit it like that. And what the instructions also recommend doing is just placing another cloth between the two just so we don't accidentally scrape up the front of our carbon fiber. So we're just gonna put it in like that and that's gonna protect the carbon fiber face. These little posts here are made out of metal so they will scratch the face very, very easily. So the next step now is to remove the two haptic motors. So we pull them up, it says don't bring, the, don't bring them too far up because we'll pull and damage the red and black wiring. It has a limited length. It's connected to the PCB with a small white connector underside of the PCB. So they pop out like so. And you can see there, yeah, there's a very limited amount of length on that, but that's okay. Pull this guy out too. And now it says push the rear of the grip down and it should pull out of the way like so. Now we, our wiring is still connected in here. So we do need to be very careful of this. And with that loose, now we wanna push the motor back through as well, like so, and that releases the grip. Now, it all seems a little bit fiddly there. It's kinda of hard to see what's going on, but let's see if I can show you again on the other side here. So what we're doing is with the motor loosened, we're pushing the grip down very carefully, remembering our wiring for the motor is still attached here. So we're just pushing down on the grip, popping it out of the little housing there, so down, and then once we've done that, we push the motor through as well. And then 
the whole thing comes out of the way like so. And you can see here now, that's probably a clearer shot of our wiring for the motor. So what I would recommend doing here is probably actually unplug these motors. It does say it gives you a choice. What we can do is we can feed those around like so. So we're just gonna grab on the connectors, make absolutely sure you're not pulling on the wiring itself, just grab on the connector. And just wiggle it free like so, and that releases our motor. So again, on this side, There we go. All right. <laughs> it's quite a few steps. I mean, it's not difficult. It's just kind of fiddly. So let's just slide this entire wheel out of the way for now. There we go. And let's have a closer look at these grips. So now what we need to do is we need to remove the motors out of these grips themselves. Now you can see in here again, some of that black goop, which is securing that wiring in place. So we're gonna need to pick that away. And that's what our little plastic pry tool is for. Now, I don't know whether this is gonna be sufficient for doing this job. We might end up needing to use a screwdriver and just be really careful, but I'm gonna just try. There we go, it actually came off not too, not too badly at all there. So when I push down on it, it kind of just broke the seal. Let's see if we are as lucky with this one as well. There we go. So it just kind of cracks off, it's quite brittle. And then our motor will pop out, nice and easy. So, same thing again. Get this plastic goop out of the way. And again on this side. There we go. So it's actually, that's a lot easier than I thought it might be to remove that. And there's our motors. So, there's the two back sides of the grips. There's the two front side of the grips. We're ready to switch them out with the pineapple grips, so let's do that. So now we just basically need to reverse everything we just did with the new grips in place. So we've got our left and right pineapple grips. I've just removed the tops so they're out of the way and everything kind of lines up. So when we bring the wheel around, it's all gonna kind of just line up with what we have here. So we're gonna drop in our two vibration motors. What I'm gonna do here is just line up the wiring so it's tucked away nicely. So I'm just gonna poke these wires away carefully back down inside there's the black one tucked away the red one tucked away really important that you make sure you do tuck these away properly because obviously these two halves are going to sit close to each other and be sandwiched between the carbon fiber layers or metal layers depending on which wheel you have and you want to make absolutely sure these aren't going to get pinched so i'm going to tuck that away in there too and that side and again just going to use my plastic pry tool just to wedge both wires in that gap. There we go, it popped in nicely. And again, the precision on the 3D printing is probably the best I've ever seen. It doesn't look great on camera, I realize that, but the tolerances are absolutely perfect. Even just down to the thickness of the wiring fit, fitting through there, that really did slot in almost, you know, just the right amount of effort required to slot that in. It wasn't so simple that it just slip out again, but not so much that you're gonna damage the wires poking them in. So let's do exactly the same thing on the other side now too. So wiring tucks in the little hole there. There we go. Around the front, through the little gap. A little bit difficult to see what I'm doing here with the lighting, but. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's our two grip parts done. So now, we'll just move them out of the way for now. Slide our wheel back in. And now, This should slot in like so. Okay, that's one side. And again, making sure we've got this cloth in place so we don't scratch up our carbon fiber. So just one little tip when you are threading these back in, just make sure you don't snag your wires for your haptic motors between the PCB and the plastic backing, it needs to pass in in front between your rotary encoder or funky switch and your analog hat switch and just pass underneath the PCB. So once those are in place, then we're gonna grab our little 
metal inserts from the bag or a little metal post. So we're just gonna tip this out on the table. So you remember we looked before we had four of these little guys. So they're gonna sit in these two holes here. So you just push them in like so, two on either side, like that. Just push them down as far as you can. They should slot in pretty easily, mine did anyway. Same deal on this side too. And those are gonna line up with the two holes on this side, so. There we go, one. And again, like you could hear that precision fitment there. That's just very unusual for 3D printed things to fit that well. So hopefully we had the same experience on this side too. There we are. Squeeze it on. And now we're gonna flip the wheel around on its back again. So we're gonna just very carefully bring everything around. There we go. So we're gonna tuck the wiring for our haptic motors back through the PCB in the little notches here. Again, being super careful. And just plug it in. And these connectors can only go in one way, they're keyed, so it'll only fit in the one direction. Okay, there's one, and two, there we are. And now it's time to screw the grips back together. So included in the kit are six of these little screws. And those are gonna be used in place of the screws that came out of the original grips, because remember we have those metal inserts now that we're gonna be screwing into completely different threads to the factory one. So really important you don't try to reuse the original screws because you will damage the threads and then that will be a bad time. So, we're just gonna pop these in. Should be pretty straightforward here. I'm not gonna tighten them down too tight to begin with. We'll just uh, get them started and then tighten them down after. Okay, so once you've got all three in and then you're sure that they're not cross-threading, then you can tighten them down. You don't need to over-tighten them. But obviously we wanna make sure that they're tight enough that they're not gonna be creaking or groaning or anything like that. I think because they use those metal inserts, we shouldn't have any problems like that, but we'll check that out once we've got completely rebuilt. There we go. All right, now exactly the same thing on the other side. There we go. Now we're gonna pop this guy back on. Just being really careful that we're not pinching any connectors anywhere or doing anything silly. Yeah, all seems to line up okay. There we are. All good. So it didn't have any issues at all refitting that part. Nothing's pinching. Just wanna make absolutely sure as well that we're not squishing our cables for our haptic motors, that's all fine. So now we can replace the two screws in the back here. And you definitely don't wanna over tighten these ones because they are screwing into plastic, so that's all good. Now we can replace these two. So remember, these were the same as the ones that we removed from the front. So these guys. flip it back around and now we've got two matching screws on the top again. There we go. Now remember we want to use the ones with the thicker heads for these middle positions. Bottom two. Now we just need to reinstall the shifters. So we'll grab these guys again. For now, flip it over on its face again. What I'm thinking I might do is install an advanced paddle module while I have it here, rather than the magnetic shifters. We've got one spare, so we may as well utilize it. So I'll go grab that now, and then we can get to installing our shifters. Managed to find my advanced paddle module, so we'll get this guy unboxed quickly. We'll install the paddles a little bit later on in the process. So we're just gonna grab the shifter out for each side. Now the process for installing these is exactly the same as the way we removed those guys. 
even down to the connectors that are used as well, but we'll get that installed. So I generally don't plug these in until I've got both in, just because it's a little bit easier to get everything in position without anything plugged in, less chance of snapping the connector off the board too. So now we're gonna feed the second one through. Now when you plug these in, you do need to be really careful because you can see the pins are actually a little bit offset towards the bottom. They're not exactly in the middle and that's how it's keyed. So it is possible to plug it in the wrong way, but you'll bend all your pins. So you just wanna make sure you've got the connector oriented so the little lip is facing towards you if the wheel's facing this way. And then the connector should slip in and push on relatively easily. If it requires force, then just double check you're not doing something wrong and the wiring will tuck up out of the way like so. So we'll do exactly the same thing on the other side too. There we go. And then again, just tucking this wiring up and out of the way. There we go, that's nice and secure. Then we'll grab our final plastic cover again. Pop him in position. Flip the wheel over. Take these guys off again too. And then if we've done everything correctly, we should still have two of these guys left over, which are gonna be going into here. So once again, just be super careful here. You don't wanna mess this up on the very last step. So these are screwing into plastic. So we wanna be very careful we don't over tighten them. Grab our two mil Allen key. Okay, so that is all of our screws back in position. Obviously I just need to install my paddles on my APM here, but we don't really need to make that part of the video because it's not gonna be relevant to most of you guys. Uh, we do of course have a separate video where we covered the advanced paddle module in detail if you're interested in that. Now one other thing I did just wanna quickly mention as well before we move on, is you'll remember the screws that we removed from our grips originally, which we didn't end up reusing in the pineapple grips. What I would highly recommend you do is just put your original grips back together and just chuck these screws back in for storage. That way you're not going to lose them because if you lose those screws, you're gonna to have to find replacements and that's gonna be a bad time. So we're just gonna quickly screw those back together. It doesn't need to be tight or anything, just enough that it's not gonna come apart. There we go, same thing on the other side and that way you won't lose those little screws. So what do we think of the pineapple grips? I mean, there's not really a whole lot you can say about a set of grips. They do what they say they do, and they do what they say they do quite well. So, I mean, they look quite nice installed. I was a little bit apprehensive about how the 3D printed plastic would look installed on the wheel, whether it would cheapen the overall look of the wheel. And I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. You can tell that it's 3D printed when you're looking at the wheel. It's quite obvious. You can see the little steps there as the 3D printer reduces in size as it comes up. So, I mean, yeah, you can tell that it's an aftermarket 3D printed part. There's no way around that, but it's not as off-putting as I thought it might be for me. It's gonna be a subjective thing, obviously. Some people it's gonna bother more than others. I'm generally not a big fan of 3D printed things. I've called that out before, particularly when they're really expensive. But I think that, you know, for the price that you're paying for these, they are, you know, about the quality you would expect. I know that if I was to go to a local average upholstery shop and ask them to reupholster something like this, it would probably cost around about the same as what you would pay for a set of pineapple grips. So yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Some people are gonna like it. Some people might be off put by that 3D printed look, but I guess the most important thing is how it actually performs. Now, I mean, there's not a whole lot of point in doing an extensive driving test or anything like that. We are gonna leave these grips on this wheel now for an extended period of time and see whether we have any problems with wear and tear, whether the leather wears down, whether the adhesive starts to wear away or bubble or anything like that so we'll definitely let you know one thing you do need to be aware of with 3d printed plastic particularly PLA is that it is a lot more susceptible to high temperature than your standard injection molded plastics are so you're definitely not going to want to leave this in any area that gets really hot or direct sunlight in a car or anything like that because it will melt and it will cause you issues but look in terms of when I grip it I can twist it I can do all those things that you'd normally do when you're driving and yeah, no creaking, no funny noises, no nothing. And again, those metal threaded inserts are actually, if anything, an improvement over the plastic that you have on the um, threads for the standard grips. So yeah, I definitely don't foresee there being any issues with regards to that. Now in terms of the fitment and finish as well, you can see where the 3D printed seams meet. It's nice and tight. They fit together very nicely. Almost seamless, I would say. You can just tell that there's a seam there. Where the leather is, Obviously you can see there's a bit of a fold there where the two sides come together, but if we look at the genuine Fnatic wheel next to it, pretty much exactly the same really. So that's certainly not a nitpick or a 
complaint. And again, if you look at the Alcantara as well, or even just compare one of these ones, same kind of gap there. Really absolutely nothing to complain about whatsoever. It's just a, you know, a byproduct of obviously having to fit the two sides together on the wheel. But yeah, look, I mean, in terms of gripping and holding the wheel, they do feel very similar to each other. Obviously, the only difference in the design being simply that we've got the rounded plastic on this one, as opposed to the leather actually wrapping around on this guy. But yeah, look, I mean, it does everything that it needs to do. And yeah, I mean, if you're in the market for a set of replacement grips, whether you're, as I said before, wanting to refresh your existing grips, uh, if they might be worn out or tired, or just wanting to get a more custom look for your wheel, then yeah, I really think that this is a good product. I think it's fairly priced as well. Obviously shipping will depend on where you live in the world. So that you do need to factor that in as well as import costs or anything like that. Uh, they should fit under the import duty threshold for most countries, I think. But again, obviously check that. And uh, yeah, I think it's as simple as that guys. So hopefully you found today's video interesting and useful. If you have, as always hit the thumbs up button. We'll put some links down in the description below as well to check out Pineapple Grips. But yeah, good product and yeah, I'm happy with it. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again soon. Bye.